Hi everyone, I am back. It's been a while because I've been traveling for the past month or so. Uh, it was great, by the way. I had a really good time, shot loads of 360 footage, gonna be making many tours of many, many cool cities and cool places. But today I am going to talk to you about the Insta360 Pro 2, which was kind of announced while I was away, so I didn't really have a chance to say much about it. But it's cool because um, today I got to go and see the Pro 2. Uh, for myself, um, Insta360 were in London and they were just showing me and a few other people who work in the VR industry or like content creators. They basically introduced the Pro 2, let us have a play with it and yeah, we got to see what it was like. Also, I'm wearing my Insta360 t-shirt, which was given to me at this little event. Um, <laughs> it is a little bit big. It's an extra, extra large. Um, yeah, but anyway, it's cool. Um, I had a good time. It was cool to see the Insta360 Pro 2 and um, for basically the team to explain some of the features. So I'm just going to tell you everything that um, I was told. I'm going to give you my first impressions and then, uh, yeah, we'll see what we think. So let's get started. So yeah, the Insta360 Pro 2 is obviously the upgrade to the Pro 1, which was released um, last year or maybe even the year before. It can shoot at 8K 3D, so stereoscopic. I can never say that word properly. 8K in 3D, whereas the previous one could only shoot 8K in mono. Uh, it could shoot 6K 3D, but this one can shoot, the Pro 2 can shoot 8K 3D, and it can also shoot in 6K at 60 FPS, which um, is kind of a big deal because, well, the higher the frame rate, usually the better looking your video is, especially viewed on a VR headset. Um, it makes it look a lot more smooth and you get a lot less like ghosting and uh, kind of that nausea inducing effect. But basically the Pro 2 has been designed not just to give you that boost of like video quality, but from what I can tell it's been designed to uh, kind of tackle the issues that basically all kind of cameras face, 360 cameras at least, um, the issues with shooting in VR and the kind of the problems that come with that. Uh, the Pro 2 has basically been designed to try and alleviate those problems. Firstly, by introducing some very long range uh, stable Wi-Fi connection. Basically, the body of the camera has two antennas, as you can see here. One of them is a GPS antenna and the other is a Wi-Fi antenna. So what that does is it allows you to connect your Pro to a tablet or a phone or a PC with kind of a Wi-Fi receiver on that end up to 300 meters away so you don't have to be hiding close by behind a car, uh, behind a tree, whatever. You don't have to be in the view, you can be very, very far away and still have very smooth uh, preview video being transmitted to your iPad or tablet or phone, whatever you're using to preview the video. So basically that allows the director or the filmmaker or whoever to properly preview the uh, experience, the video, without having to be close, without having to lose late, like having uh, poor Wi-Fi connection. In my experience, even with the, the cheaper cameras that shoot in low resolution, the preview has always been very stuttery and not reliable, especially if you're more than just a few meters away. And in many cases, that's not enough to get out of shot uh, if you're shooting a 360. Now, I have some video of um, some of the guys here talking at Insta360, so I will pepper this video with what they say, and they'll kind of explain it better than me. The audio was not great because I was using just my camera without any external audio, but you can take a listen to see what Insta360 said themselves during this presentation. Another thing that really affects the video quality uh, of any kind of camera, or particularly 360 cameras, is the bitrate. Um, you can have a very large resolution, you can have 6K, 8K, 4K, whatever, but if the bitrate is low, it's not gonna look very good. So one of the, I think, uh, particularly exciting new features of the Pro 2 is that the bitrate is three times higher than in the Pro 1. So it can shoot at 8K at 120 megabits per second, which is very, well, quite impressive, I'd say. I uh, don't know of any other camera that can shoot that high bitrate. I mean, this is a professional camera, so maybe some of the other ones can, but in any case, three times higher than the Pro 1. And it manages to do this because it uses six micro SD cards and one full SD card, as opposed to just one full SD card that the previous one used. So each lens is recorded onto a different SD card and uh, that allows it to basically, yeah, maintain that very, very high bit rate. And the difference is quite noticeable. Insta360 have shown what the difference is. You can check it out here. And uh, yeah, I think that is a very key feature for improving the video quality without necessarily improving the resolution because I think 8K resolution is high enough, but the bitrate three times higher. It doesn't look three times better, but it does look noticeably better. Okay, so another feature that I think makes the Insta360 Pro video look uh, very good and, and well improved upon its previous version is an automatic HDR mode, which basically, yeah, massively improves the contrast and the dynamic range of your video. Um, it also works for photos, but you can see here the difference between the two. Um, this kind of shot in, by the sea with the sunlight 
you can see that the dynamic range or the HDR video improves the dynamic range a lot, kind of removes all those highlights, too much highlights in the sky, and really brings out more of the details. So I always try and apply like a HDR effect in my videos anyway, uh, but I usually have to do that in post-production. But yeah, the fact that you can do it kind of automatically, I mean, it may not be perfect for every environment, so you may need to go and adjust that later. But the fact that you can do it, I do think it's going to improve basically any shot you can have. Uh, so yeah, that's a very cool feature and it seems to be very easy to accomplish. Now, there were some questions in this little meeting that we had about the quality of the low light, uh, low light video, because the previous version, well, I mean, most 360 cameras very much struggle in low light. Um, and yeah, it's it's just been an issue. But the fact that uh, the higher bit rate, the better dynamic range, and the fact that it records separately to SD, um, separate SD cards, apparently means that the low light is a lot better. So I did get to see this. I got to uh, kind of try out a view on a VR headset, what the uh, low light video looks like from the Insta360 Pro. Now I say it's low light, it was shot in a city, so it was artificial light, it wasn't completely like darkness, so there's still, I'm not sure how it's going to work in reality, but shot in a city, um, it was night time, it looks very good, it looks better than any kind of camera that I've used, it definitely looked better than the last Insta360 Pro, uh, so yeah, I mean it, it did a pretty good job, but whether it shoots actually very well in low, low light um, remains to be seen. So like the last uh, Pro, the Pro 1, the Pro 2 it can live stream in 360, it can do so in 4K, and yeah, it will uh, do so very easy, very simply. I mean, the last one was quite simple to use for live stream, so I'm pretty sure this one will also be quite simple to use. But the feature added to this is that when you are live streaming in 4K, you can also simultane simultaneously sorry, record in 8K and then use that file for, I don't know, whatever purposes you want to. You might edit it down, just pick out the highlights, make a separate video. But the fact is you can record both. You can do both at the same time. So live stream in 4K and record in 8K at the same time. Okay, so that's kind of the main features for like video, for improving video. Um, the resolution hasn't gone up. I don't think it really needs to because there's a limit to what we can view right now on a VR headset or even on a laptop or whatever. 8K is uh, pretty good. I viewed some video and from this shot with the Pro 2 and it looks really good compared to many other cameras that I've seen, even professional cameras. Uh, it looks really good. Probably the biggest upgrade I think uh, for this camera is the addition of stabilization. Um, yeah, so basically Insta360 have managed to add the same stabilization it has for its Insta360 One, the kind of small consumer camera. They've managed, it's called Flow State by the way, um, they've managed to implement this stabilization into the Pro 2. Now if you've never used the Insta360 One before, you may um, assume that you know software stabilization isn't going to be good enough. Uh, however, it really is. It works so well on the Insta360 One. I've been running with it, I've been walking, jumping, and it smooths out everything. Something to do with 360 cameras means that you can really stabilize footage very, very well. Um, digital stabilization. And with this camera, we've taken that, we've taken what we learned from our action camera, and we've applied it to our Pro series for the first time. So it has a, a nine axis gyro on board, and we, get, we capture really, really precise information on every way that the camera is moving. It works for 3D, it works for mono as well. And then we take it and in post, you use our algorithm and it will automatically automatically stabilize it um, with no effort on your part. And it looks, it looks very, very good. And the major benefit of that is that you don't have to use any stabilizing equipment, which is a huge problem in VR because you have to go in and remove it in post. Or you have to just use um, or you don't have stabilizing equipment and you have to go in and just do post-production stabilization, which is a huge time suck. Um, so this camera solves that problem and we think that it's going to help people kind of invent a new, a new camera language for VR. So like I say, they have put this stabilization into the Pro 2 and I again had a look at it. I had a look at the footage, uh, moving footage shot with the Pro 2. Now they weren't running, they weren't making, you know, swinging the camera around, they were just walking with it. But it was pretty smooth. I mean like, you know, uh, you can move with this camera and it's not going to make you want to vomit. It's not going to make the viewer want to go nauseous. Um, it was worked well. This um, flow state stabilization works really, really well, guys. Uh, honestly, I'm not selling the camera like I just know it works well and I've seen it. It's the best stabilization I've seen in a pro-level camera, uh, full stop. So if it actually worked, I mean, this was a demo, so 
obviously demos can be slightly misleading they may have done some more editing but um, from what I've seen it looks really good and the stabilization works really really well okay let's take a look now at this kind of uh, Wi-Fi receiving uh, feature so basically what you get is you get the pro you get the um, the ball shaped camera you also get some the Wi-Fi receiver which you uh, need to attach to the Pro. Now, the issue with that is that where do you put it? Um, now, I'm assuming you're supposed to just put it underneath the camera or attach it to a, a tripod, whether you're using with some tape or something. There's nothing actually to attach it to. It would be good if there was just like a little clip or a little something that could just clip onto a um, tripod pole or something that then you wouldn't have to tape it or anything. You get, and you also get a Wi-Fi receiver, which you attach to uh, your iPad or tablet or phone or whatever you're using and all of this comes with the camera It's all in the package. So that's what you need to use this fast sight. I think it's called um, Basically this large transmission area which allows you to preview your video and make adjustments Very very quickly very easily and the adjustments you can make are actually really good um, Like for example, you can on the on the app that controls the camera not only can you preview it But you can adjust brightness you can adjust contrast um, saturation and you can do this all on the fly, you can do this from 300 meters away. You even have access to the curves, which I really like. I always use curves for photos and videos just to get that uh, kind of contrast right. And But you can do that straight away on the app on while controlling the camera and preview it instantly and then record using that setting. But yeah, uh, I really liked it, it was very intuitive. I was right next to the camera, so I mean, I didn't get to test it from 300 meters away. Uh, so I have to take the word for it that that works, but I mean, I'm assuming they've tested it and it does. So if it does, then that's awesome. Now I'm gonna move on to something other than the camera itself. I'm gonna talk about the workflow because this is another thing that have people struggle with or VR creators have struggled with is the workflow is long and intense and arduous and expensive. Um, so Insta360 has been working on a ways to alleviate this to make it simpler and easier to make 360 videos, VR videos. The thing with the Pro 2 is that we weren't just trying to solve problems with the capture side of VR. We realized that there's bottlenecks kind of throughout the whole workflow of VR right now in capture, in post-production, and then also even in delivery. So along with all of these upgrades to the camera itself, we've also upgraded our, our post-production, our editing workflow. We work with Adobe um, to, to integrate really smoothly into Premiere Pro, which is what we have set up here. So the other thing that this, that this camera will save Every time you shoot with it, you've got the six original files from each lens. On the, on the full-size SD card, you have the flow state stabilization data, and then you also have proxy files. So we, we shoot a low-res proxy file every single time you shoot with the Pro 2, and those are specifically designed to be grabbed by Premiere Pro, and then it will stitch them together on the fly so that you have a preview stitched image that you can do all of your editing on, and there's no stitching at all before you start your edit. So you don't have to spend time going through and selecting footage, deciding what you want to stitch and then put into your editing software. You just grab your totally raw, unedited six individual files, throw them onto Premiere Pro, it stitches them up, and then you can edit it right there. So it's so if you download this free plugin, uh, install it into uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, and you use the Insta360 Pro 2, shoot some video, drag the video into Premiere Pro, you will be able to edit a proxy file automatically, which doesn't require any stitching. It will just automatically be stitched instantly. And uh, you just edit that and make all the edits that you otherwise would on a normal video and then render that out and it will stitch that at that moment. Basically in a normal workflow, you'll be filming, stitching, editing, rendering. If in this workflow, the Insta what Insta360 has created, you just need to film, edit, then render and while you render it, it will stitch the final video as well. So yeah, that is a big plus. And um, like, I mean, it just will save so much time. And regardless of, even if there's a different camera that does shoot better quality, if it takes twice as long to get the video out, uh, to get it done, then it's probably not gonna be worth it because the video quality won't be a huge amount of difference. Now, I think the final thing to talk about and the final innovation that they have uh, to come with the Pro 2, is I think it's called Crystal View and I don't entirely understand it yet. Uh, basically, it means that when you view your Pro 2 footage on a VR headset or any actually any other footage, I think, you, but you need the Pro 2 to get the software to, for it to work. Um, it will allow you to view true 8K footage, even if your headset is only 4K uh, capable, I think. I don't know. Basically, I think it means the video quality is improved when you view it on a VR headset and there's no loss of like resolution, which 
apparently is what happens on other headsets. So yeah, guys, that's the Insta360 Pro 2. So the uh, Insta360 have told me that they're going to let me use the camera, they're going to let me review it, um, so I will do so, I will thoroughly test it, everything from the video to the workflow to this crystal view, all of it, and I will let you know as soon as possible really what it's like, uh, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. Um, otherwise, I posted some example footage on this channel and I've shown you some here, so hopefully that has uh, kind of quenched your thirst. Yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Let me know what you think of the Pro 2, what you think is the best new feature and what maybe they should include in the future. Hope this has been useful. Um, wow, it's getting sunny now, so I'm gonna go. Bye. Oh my God.